the uh, largest tie to the logging industry right now is with the mill that was put into the area. And what were you saying about that? About that Teal Jones, that, do they own the mill? No, no, that's uh, the band owned the mill. Okay. It's called Pachita Forest or something like that, or Forest Products or something, Pachina or something like that. And um, they own uh, two outfits and uh, one's called Cuisto, that's a pretend to own, it's kind of odd, what happened, Marvin was chief. They started Cuisto Forest Products when they got the uh, license for down that way, at 62, whatever it is, and um, uh, they ran out of contracts. So they're laid off for a while. And the um, son of uh, the manager, Tom Jones' son, said, Marvin, you got no uh, contract now. Um, can you, um, I'll buy the, I'll buy the um, equipment off you. So he bought the equipment, and then um, Cuisto Forest Products wound up with a contract, but they had no equipment. And so the, the, the Tom's son said, well, I have the equipment. I'll just buy Cuisto Forest off you. So he wound <laughs> up owning the whole shebang. And uh, it's... It's like Macmillan and Bodell said they were Macmillan and Bodell in their last days. In fact, they were you know, all shareholders. So that's how Teal Jones is. We have a, there's a, another outfit. There's a holding company in Vancouver, Pachina something or the other. I forget, Pachina. I have it somewhere in my notes that um, I guess is an agent to sell our timber to bidders you know and um, so the um, we're quite involved in forced fiber or whatever it's called and selling it and uh, our band is I think uh, selling it for other interests that are go between and uh, so it's kind of a shady world out there <laughs> forest <laughs> and these you got holding companies and you got logging companies that uh, say they're owned uh, in in Cuisto name only but there's another outfit I can't remember it. I'll give it to you they our band owns outright but I can't remember the name of it. And they're logging the watershed. And and I guess the excuse was um, white loggers can't log it, but Indian loggers can, <laughs> or something like that. You know. But I'm not sure how or why they were permitted to log the watershed. I think maybe because they said, oh, it's First Nations timber or something like that. So, but that's not my concern, but it's certainly the concern of uh, the water, Victoria Water District, you know, <laughs> because yeah. they'll be liable to themselves if they, you know, in fact, if you can sue them, you know, but I'm not sure if you can sue a, a government-owned corporation, but... For the Pashidat, how much of the timber business is old growth and how much of it is second growth? It probably probably half, half and half, I think. Okay. And I think they uh, likely do that to, um, you know, show face, PR and that. There's a man named Tim, or 
something Johnson from Global News is going to be here tomorrow, and he will be up. And are you going to be there, up there? Do you plan to possibly? I hope so. Yeah. Good. Uh, um, and I hope you'll all be there <laughs> yeah. to show our numbers. Mm -hmm. Hello. Speak to him as honestly as I can. Um, Paul Johnson or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, some of the old um, protectors there will be here. Um, Erica will be here. Erica Heinemann, Heinemann or something like that. And, uh, mm -hmm. Peter, no, I think Peter's not coming. But uh, Marlene was just a head, little, was down or protecting it just about two or three years before. Um, Marlene Simmons was here, will be here too. So, along with uh, uh, our uh, Reuben <laughs> and uh, an, a First Nations artist will be here too, of all things. Mm. Which I'm sort of happy. I'm happy to get him. Then I invited some. Well, if you're swamped with a bunch of engines from Lake College, you don't be surprised, mm -hmm. because I invited a church to come up here there oh, and pray. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, without anybody's, with, with my permission, I said, "Well, I'm the elder. I can invite." Oh, you can invite anyone you want. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, yeah. Is there, is there an appetite, or is there a, is there a vision from the people that includes tourists to come up to see the big trees? Do, do does the nation recognize the the importance or the possibility of tourism in the area? Not quite, yes, sir. I don't think they are expressing a statement by the band council or anything like that. But the only ones that are making statements are the uh, Chamber of Commerce, Port Brentford Chamber of Commerce. Now. And they put these little maps up and stuff like that. You know? For Avatar Grove, etc. Avatar cetera. Grove map and that. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, our band. Uh, I don't think we, they're not familiar with territorial assertiveness, you know, it's uh, a good PR thing, you know, like most nations, you say, welcome to Quoctoot or whatever, you know, or welcome to Quoctofino, and, you know, you're entering, uh, you know, and uh, there's nothing here. And uh, we don't have any uh, border signposts saying this is your notice of any surveys or anything like that. And um, so it's um, a dilemma. And there's, I imagine, with uh, these um, treaties and that, actually, that's another awkward thing because the treaty isn't. Um, signed yet. There's no agreement. Mm -hmm. We're still in the Indian Act, which means that the, the um, Minister of Indian Affairs is my, I'm a ward of his, I'm his, I'm his charge, I guess you call it. <laughs> and until the Indian Act is it's done away with, and the um, treaty is signed, then uh, I'll be under the authority of the Pachina First Nation government, which technically we don't. It's sort of messy now. We uh, the, They're sort of edging towards it, but the government owns owes the money, and they um, distribute it and, you know, share it with who and they always have to um, learn a song. That's what I think it's called. 
they go to um, workshops and get trained by these administrators to administer the money and uh, indoctrinate them into the bureaucracy. <laughs> mm. Which I think is, uh, uh, I guess that's just normal. I don't know. If you're, uh, if you're going to learn how to run the shop, you have to learn the rules, I guess. But <laughs> it's my, rather messy. So you're stuck between um, an agreement that's not signed and the Indian Act that is being null or like taken down eventually, but you're stuck in between. Yeah, These along with treaty, um, there was an order in council saying that there will be no, um, the courts will not accept any First Nations briefs or writs um, until after treaty, and after treaty, they don't count. I got that from the um, chief judge in Victoria. I was complaining about the river filling up with gravel and that, and siltation. And I was trying to um, register my complaint in court. And the, I went into the courthouse, and there's the row of wickets you know, where all the clerks go and they said, well, you'll have to talk to um, a judge. So I said, there's a judge's, um, over there by the door is the judge's wicket where they hand out the um, assignments to the judges, you know, in their scheduling, scheduling office. So I went there, and I was standing there, and this guy, Husky Butter, <laughs> came in and he had jeans on. And he was the chief judge. And while he was chatting with them, and I was chatting with another clerk in there, and he said, well, you can present your case, but it won't be able to go through court. There's been an order in council of, by the Canadian government to not accept any more or any complaints of, of by then uh, by Indian Act members until after treaty and then they're done away with after treaty anyway in other words he he said virtually most of the Indians in BC are what do they call it um, done without a vote what's the name of that I forget what what it's called, where you uh, don't have a vote and you have no legal um, access to courts. I think that's called genocide. What? Genocide. Or I for, uh, anyway, <laughs> there's a slavery. Word, yeah. Slavery. But sort of, yeah. So we don't. Wow. So that's a, a messy thing that I don't know if it's true or not. Which makes it, um, worrisome. Yeah.